everybody, welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well and welcome to my spoiler free review for A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. So if you haven't heard much about this book, it's the first full length novel of um, Clark's Dead Gin universe. He's written three uh, novellas in the lead up to this, A Dead Gin in Cairo, The Angel of Khan El Khalili and the Haunting of Tram Car 034, I think is what it is, or 043. I'll leave the um, links to all those below in the, in the comments. And my personal experience with those is that I read Dead Gin and I read The Angel. I've not read the third one yet and, you know, I absolutely adored them. So I was really, really excited when I finally managed to get a chance to get a copy of Master of Gin and finally read the first full length novel that those three novellas have been building up to. And, you know, obviously I had really, really high expectations for this one. Synopsis is set in Cairo, 1912. Though Fatma El Sharawi is the youngest woman working for the Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantments and Supernatural Entities, she's certainly not a rookie, especially after presenting the destruction of the universe last summer. So when someone murders a secret brotherhood dedicated to one of the most famous men in history, Al Jahiz, Agent Fatma is called onto the case. Al Jahiz transforms the world 50 years ago when he opened up the veil between the magical and mundane worlds, before vanishing into the unknown. This murderer claims to be Al Jahiz, returned to condemn the modern age for its social oppressions. His dangerous magical abilities instigate unrest in the streets of Cairo that threaten to spill over onto the global stage. Alongside her military colleagues and her clever girlfriend Siti, Agent, Agent Fatma must unravel the mystery behind this imposter to restore peace to the city or face the possibility that he could be exactly who he seems. My general thoughts is just, I mean, it's no secret that I absolutely adore the Gen Gen universe. If you've missed it, I do have a spoiler review from when I read that novella last year. And this first novel really makes its mark in this series. Like, I honestly was a bit nervous as to whether it was going to be able to top the novellas because, you know, the shit that goes down in the novellas is pretty insane stuff. Um, but it does. It does its novel status proud. It tells an even more epic scale, high stakes story than anything we've seen before. It's captivating, it builds on what you've learned in the, the novellas and takes some of those plot points forward, but doing so in a way where if you haven't read the novellas, you know, you're not missing out on anything, you still know what's going on, you still know who is who. The references to the novellas are more like fun rewards for those of us that have read them and they don't detract from the story whatsoever that you are following in Master of Jin, but it does kind of help just make this universe feel really, really rich. I think if you were reading this, from the perspective of someone who haven't read the novellas, you know, it references things that happened before, it references people who have met each other in other stories, and it kind of just makes you really understand that this is a really rich world, you know, these characters still exist even when you put the book down kind of feeling, you know, I think that's just done really, really well. Fatma continues to be one of my favourite heroines in any story. She's smart, capable, independent, and handles this incredibly difficult case in the best way she can. She's put through a lot in this book in finding out new things about those who are closest to her and she kind of comes to her terms with her own outlook on the world and how she perhaps prejudices and judges others up to a point. You know, the world of this book has so many cultures, faiths, mythologies and ways of life all coming to clash together in this Cairo setting. I think this book does a really, really great job of highlighting how overwhelming and chaotic somewhere like that can be, especially for someone who is quite faithful to her own beliefs and opinions of the world, yet we still see Fatima trying to understand in it all in the best way that she can and in the most um, polite and understanding way that she can. There's a new character, Hadia, who's introduced. Hadia, who is introduced in this book as the ministry that Fatma works for, starts to implement the kind of idea that their officers need to work together in pairs. And I love how this completely throws Fatma off her rhythm as she learns to trust and accept Hadia as a part of her life and as a partner. As the only two women in the ministry, they have that respect for one another, but that's kind of where it ends for Fatma because she likes to be independent. So Hadia, having Hadia around really throws her for a loop. And I really love Hadia, she, you know, I like how she challenges Fatma and calls her out for the way that she behaves and, she, and Hadia is super smart, you know, seeing through Fatma's lies and attempts to get rid of her. She's a really great addition to this cast of characters and I really hope to see more of her. She's just so sweet and very capable and I just really, really like the way that she approaches her position and approaches Fatma in this book. Um, she's also just really great fun with all her family and her cousins, like she has Every single time something happens, you know, Hadia's got a cousin who knows something about this or has gone through something similar. I just really, really love that. It's really funny. I sometimes realize that I have quite a large family myself. Um, so sometimes you're just like, oh yeah, I know a cousin like that. Oh, I know an aunt that does that. Oh, I know a second cousin that does that and things. So I just really enjoy that aspect of her character. 
Siti is really great in this book. Um, you're first introduced to her in Dead Jin, and I love how she becomes more of a presence here. She's a great way to introduce the religions and sects that wor worship the old Egyptian gods, as Siti herself worships the goddess Hathor. Um, and putting that against Fatima's Muslim faith is a really, really clever contrast, really great contrast, and a really great way to show the mix of cultures and faiths living side by side that I mentioned earlier. Siti is such a fun character, you know, she's confident and sexy and fierce. She's such a fantastic love interest and I absolutely adore every scene that she appears in. I think I have a bit of a crush on her to be honest, let's be real here. Um, I love how she and Fatma work together and the trust they have for one another is awesome. And I like how their relationship is put to the test in this book with both women needing to discuss their differences in faith and learn how to understand that secrets that perhaps they're keeping from one another. And I just really, really enjoy the way that it develops across the course of this book and what they mean for each other, what each of them brings to their relationship. It's just a really, really great relationship to read. The plot is really, really well paced. It's very fast, loads going on, but a really good balance of action and like quieter character moments. I really enjoyed how the mystery unfolds. You know, you start with this sort of mass murder leading into the potential return of Al Jahiz, but everything is working out, you know, everything in working out the mystery kind of comes back to that original murder, which I really, really loved, you know. I liked that it wasn't just the inciting incident to bring back Al Jahiz and establish him as a um, threat, you know. The components of that murder and why those people were targeted kind of comes into, into how, how Fatma works out whether this really is Al Jahiz back or if it's an imposter. Everything has its place in this mystery, you know, all the events, all the characters you meet and the things that they get up to, things that Fatma gets up to and how she influences things, you know, they're all connected and it all comes together in this incredibly epic finale. I did find some parts of it to be a little exposition dumpy at some times, but it's written in a really engaging way, I think, that you can overlook it. But, you know, you do kind of sit here and like, okay, this is the part where we perhaps get a little bit of the exposition, but you know, I kind of can't really think of any other way that the author could have brought that information in. Um, as well, you know, reveals with other characters and whatnot just add to the story and to the narrative that the book is telling. Everything comes back to the world that they live in with magic and jinn and the creatures calling themselves angels and Fatma and her agency trying to find a way to help everyone and everything to kind of live together in peace. You know, it's just got this really great overarching theme of peace and living together despite your differences that kind of everything in the story does kind of come back to time and time again. The world building is awesome. The general idea is just, you know, like I said, like I said in the synopsis around 50 years ago, Al Jahiz brought magic and magical creatures into the world. So you're now seeing a 1912 Cairo in an environment where they've escaped colonization by Europe and are now living alongside all these magical beings. You know, it's, it's such a fun setting and it definitely lends itself well to the theme I mentioned of everyone living together despite your differences. It's chaotic but great fun and Fatma has got such a huge job of being not really magical law enforcement but kind of being that sort of bridge between mundane and magical. Um, she does work closely with the police but I do like that despite the fact that she does do that this book definitely isn't pro-police and there are definitely scenes showing how often the police force makes situations worse or overreact to civilians expressing anger so don't worry if you're fairly anti-police you know this book in no way glorifies the police force but it do I think it does it in a very you know the way it discusses po the police um, it definitely discusses the flaws in policing systems around the world and does it I think in a very realistic and important, like easy to understand way and it's, you know, it doesn't say whether they're good or bad, but it's just like, you know, the, the actions that you have, despite your best intentions, if you're hurting people and if you are overreacting, you are the bad guys in this scenario, I don't care if you're the police enforcement, and I thought that was just really, really well done. Um, oh, this book is just so great, it's like fun, fun. it's steampunk as well, so like, I don't know if that really comes across, but it's like, I love the kind of like, technology in this book as well, like there's magic stuff and then there's a lot of kind of like steam and robotic kinds of things all kind of coming together in this early 20th century setting and stuff, it's just so much fun, it's just so great to, it's such a rich world as well, like I would love to see an adaptation of this because I think just to see this on screen would just be amazing, however it would be very difficult I think to pull this off because it's just such a fantastic story, they need a hella budget to get this right. Um, but oh, that's it from me. It's just a great book. Awesome characters. Utterly amazing story. I have got nothing but good things to say about Master of Jin. I highly recommend reading this one. I highly recommend reading all the novellas. You can get the novellas on audiobook, I think, tend to be where they can be found. I'm not sure if there's physical copies of them or not. But, yeah. 
you gotta read this series, man. You gotta read this series. <laughs> That's all for me today. L have you read A Master of Gin? Have you read A Dead Gin, Gin in Cairo or any of the other novellas? Please let me know what your thoughts are of this series and these books down below in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. If you do decide to go away and read A Master of Gin and come back, definitely come back and let me know what you thought. Does it live up to the hype I've set for it or did you have any issues with it? Let me know. I'd love to discuss our differences. If you've reached the end of this video, feel free to leave a like and feel free to subscribe. I post two videos a week. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.